Five seconds remaining. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Even geniuses <sighs> turn to ban. Game one in a best of three series. OG versus Evil Geniuses. This is the upper bracket. So the winner will continue on to the upper bracket finals. While the loser of this match will have to drop down to the lower bracket and battle through a couple more steps if they want to reach the Aegis. The draft has begun and we'll start seeing those uh, bands come up on screen and the picks. But we talked a little bit about it, maybe a little bit more unconventional on the side of OG. Do you think Evil Geniuses is looking to take that out them and force them into EG's own meta, or do they feel confident in their individual skills? I think if I'm EG, I want to take OG out of the comfort zone since they are not really following the meta so much. They have, like uh, Sin mentioned, they have this, this own play style that uh, they've developed over the group stages. So I feel like when you're playing against a team like this, it's good to take them out of their comfort zone. Maybe not focus so much on the meta. I I love seeing these bands from OG though. Like this, uh, they banned Weaver and Ursa. These are two of the most instrumental picks that Evil Geniuses have used throughout the groups and the playoffs that we've seen so far here at the main event. They this Ursa has been a great pick for them. The Weaver we've seen a lot of that from S4, and it definitely shows that OG's preparation going into this is okay. We need to be competitive in laning. They ban pretty they much ban, each ban three IO, best though. laners. They ban IO when they are first pick. So does it yeah. tell you that they don't really want the hero at all? I, have we seen OG even play it? Is my question. I don't. I don't think I have think seen them have. playing it. But at the same time, No Tail was also known for the IO. But he's a position five player here. Yeah. And in this big stage, you don't really want to put Jerax in yeah. position five. Here. They're kind of like the way they're using Jerax reminds me of when he was in Hot Six. He would always be playing this like uh, suppose they can push out the lane, like the Wyvern. Like he's playing the Lina sometimes. Like they're. It feels like they're giving him more like uh, priority in terms of having a push out hero so he can keep farming. It's pretty outdated information, but Jerax didn't like IO in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, IO I don't believe was played at all so far in the main stage in their first match in the group stage. One game by Jerax uh, didn't go well. That was that was one of the <laughs> like, losses, oh, so. we lost one game. Nah, let's never try that again. <laughs> this so is not a hero. too much of a sample pool. This hero I was expecting to see a lot more in the main event than we have. I think Nature's Prophet is. I wouldn't say criminally underrated, but definitely not utilized as much as you would expect. It's really strong in lane. Uh, it's very good at contesting for the bounty runes at the right timings, can push the towers to get map control. Uh, and OG has been the only team that I think has prioritized it this high. I don't even think we've seen it first pick even yeah, by OG it can even now, be so. played in so many roles. Yes. And uh, we, we always mention in this kind of like a high quality like uh, series, we always mention how important it is to place really good wards. Very easy for Nature's Prophet as a position on five to place those really important wards. So going back to the European qualifier, a lot of times back in those uh, meta, the hero that was prioritized as position on five was starting from Chen and then Witch Doctor, and then Furion. So I think they're kind of, it can be uh, position three for sure, but they're, they're, OG's trying to secure his, their safe lane, and then Furion can do that really well. So I guess they, that's why they opt to go for yeah. it. And they're gonna get their draw, which is uh, I think something that they're gonna be really uh, happy about too. Uh, with the, the Furion, so they're gonna have uh, like really really strong lanes. Uh, like you said, you can use the Prophet to secure the Drow's lane because Drow is not the best laner. You don't really have to win the Drow's lane, but you kind of just hope that she doesn't really get run over and Prophet could, uh, could be a good option to at least make sure the Drow gets a, a decent laning phase. And on top of things, you can always TP and help the other lanes snowball, take towers. I think another thing that when we, uh, when we see EG play, they have these really strong laners, but mainly, I would say the two lanes that they crush the most just based on matchup a lot of the time is the two side lanes. I think Sumail will often win lanes that he's not favored in or just at least do, do, do well in the lane. And that makes me wonder if OG are thinking, okay, if they have this really heavy side lane focus, do we put the Drow Ranger mid like we've seen out of VGJ Storm? And you know, okay, 
It's going to be tough playing it against Samael, but given that it's the right matchup, let's say it's someone who's not a total lane dominator, let's say Samael's playing Alchemist, or he's playing something like Storm, do you put the Drow there and try to, to get that fast level 6 and, and speed up the game so your lanes get strong faster? I'm very curious to see if OGR have this multi, multi way of playing Drow or only play it in a side. All right, well, we're waiting for the last bit in the second phase here. A couple more bands. I like the Lina bin here because, like, from seeing OG playing against BG earlier in the earlier yesterday, is that like they pick like confusing hero in the third, third phase where it can be mid in the off lane, mm -hmm. and one game they put it mid when it, where, where right. it looks good, and then if it not, give it, give it to Jax. Yeah, yeah. that's like taking them out of their comfort zone because you force them into something else. And I think so far Topson has been playing mainly the Invoker and the Lina. Those mm -hmm. are his really uh, top uh, top heroes right now. Um, Invoker could still be really good for them since it's yes. pretty pretty decent against uh, pretty good against the Necro. Especially Thompson's favorite way of playing the Invoker. <clears throat> he kind of uh, I I would say in a way he almost re resurrected Quaswax Invoker at a time when almost everyone was playing Quasic Sword. When you have that draw aura, you're much stronger early on with the damage and. In his classic build that he started using a lot, he would get that fast Spirit Vessel, which is amazing against Necrophos. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this ban coming out from EG. Um, but we'll see. They're actually taking their time. I wonder what alternative they're considering right now. Especially when you have a Draw Ranger, the Fast Vex Invoker value goes up even more, right? Yeah, that's definitely true. Like Invoker with the uh, Quaswax Invoker with Draw is very, very scary. Uh, on top of things, we know that he's going to have that uh, a very early Spirit Vessel, so he's going to be constantly trying to pressure you, roam around, Ghost Walk around, force rotations from the enemy, force reaction, and force sentries everywhere. He's going to pressure the supports a lot if he gets a good laning phase. So evil, for evil GG's side, because you have the Vengeful Spirit, you want to have a hero that right clicks somewhat, but at the same time, you need a gap closer against this uh, Draw Ranger, and also deal with uh, Furion's flip Skiosh. Yeah, PL is a good pick. Yeah, PL is great against uh, Draw, great against the uh, Nature's Prophet. Depend the Pugna of Thompson. That's another right. great hero against the Necrophos. The but wouldn't you say Invoker is actually more annoying here because of uh, the aura uh, lineup? Um, they might be worried that... So if, let's say, EG are planning to go for a harder carry type hero uh -huh. this game because some of their strong laners are out, they might be concerned that giving away Pugna together with Nature's Prophet and Drow would just make for a way too fast push that they can't keep up with. Crosswax Invoker is a bit better at team fighting against a hero like Necrophos, I would say, overall, but he's a slower pusher, and they might just be worried that OG can kind of just take control of the whole map in 20 minutes. Mm. Right. This is uncharacteristically weak laning pick for EG. Here comes the Shaker. Can Evil just can pick PL here, like predicting the. Yeah, there you go. Here, so. They picked it into Shaker. Yep. So OG definitely have considered this. And now it's a matter of what tempo you want to play. Uh, a classic Ana hero in this situation would be the Ember Spirit. Playing that against the Phantom Lancer as well as Necrophos would actually be pretty decent, but I just feel like it doesn't fit with Drow. Like, that kind of lineup is not well-rounded. So... I think you kind of just want to go for, like, a tr tr tri call and maybe kind of maybe build an Agony Maelstorm on the Drow later instead of, like, going for Ember yeah. to deal with it. I feel like uh, when you have Drow, whenever you have Drow, you need to... You're pretty much set in stone with your, your whole strat and draft. You have to just go with it. Earlier today, we have seen Lash against the PL and the Necroforce, which worked really well, and he's a range hero in the laning phase. But we can see that working. He here. is, I would say, Lash Track is very susceptible to Venge. It's one of the heroes you really don't want to get aggressive swapped on because you're very positional dependent and pretty fragile in the earlier stages of the game. So getting swapped into any stun and then a Reaper, you kind of just die, and OG have no save whatsoever. So, ah, I guess Fissure, but. That's very situational that you can pull that off. But at the same time, I'm staying away from Lash as well because, oh. because it's not a comfort hero for the OG is what I feel. And then I, if I was OG coach, I would kind of, even though the Enigma is not the best hero here, I mean, I'm at the Ember Spirit, but I will still go back for the Ember Spirit because it's one of the best hero for Ana. So Prophet is support, I guess? E yes. More than likely, unless they pull out some sort of position for Yaps or <laughs> Enigma that we saw earlier today, but I would not advise that in this game. <laughs> so Zeus is one of the tops in zero as well, I guess, and yeah. then he's pretty good against both Necro and yeah. the PL, so that's a really nice spin. Zeus was definitely a good band. That could have been a pick in that fourth slot for OG as well. I still, you kind of have that feeling that they will end up on the Invoker. 
But maybe they're a bit concerned about picking Invoker against a blind mid. They don't know what his matchup is. And a lot of the times you see these teams when they last pick their mid or when they ninth pick their mid, they get a hero that has bad matchups or even if it has or it has very few bad matchups and the ones that it has are not unplayable. That was one of the problems that we saw Miracle's Alchemist fall into yep. in the last game was that he's the ninth pick. Alchemist didn't know his lane matchup. They pick that Bloodseeker and they pressure him super hard. And that kind of situation is... That was Miracle, right? He's one of the most uh, added players we have here. So for Thompson, it's... There you go. There you go. He has yeah. the draw aura. It's, uh, it's textbook OG. It's textbook like OG. They just didn't pick the best heroes, but they picked the comfort hero for themselves for sure. And mm -hmm. I want to see how it goes. Yeah, and per, uh, like you guys have said, perhaps that is where OG feels best right now, at least in that first game. See how it goes. Know what... Or play know what you know best. And it was, uh, TA is not bad, right? Yeah. This could be a Samael TA game, potentially. Uh, one of Invoker's worst matchups in mid, and the draw aura doesn't make much of a difference in that matchup. TA still is, is way superior. Um, what do you think about PL? Like, PL is also a good matchup in the lane against the Invoker. I think that's a historically good matchup, but I want to say that as of late, the Quaswex Invoker actually wins that lane just by constantly harassing the Phantom Lancer. You win the uh, region war by just having the Quas orbs constantly. You just hit, hit, hit. And when you have uh, the threat of the TPN from the Nature's Prophet, especially if he's in the support role, which we're expecting, uh, putting Phantom Lancer mid could definitely backfire. I'm, I'm very confident here that they will grab a male hero that has that good matchup in mid but maybe what eg are thinking here is they want to look at the big picture too lanes is one thing this game they don't have the strongest laners uh compared to what they usually have had and they, they got to look at the team fight og's team fight is sick and they have very limited options against it it will be the ta regardless the TA, yeah yeah like coming you out, mentioned so. So that wraps it up for the draft now looking at this we talked a little bit about og uh, winner how do you feel about evil genius's team I think I kind of like OG's lineup more still. I, I feel like OG has much more balance. And, um, they have team fight, they have lanes, and I, I favor Drow a lot. I think Drow is really, really strong right now. All right, well, we do have the fans all getting riled up. Regardless of which team you're rooting for, there's a lot to be rooting for in this matchup. It is OG versus Evil Geniuses. And before we go into game, we have Casey with Bulba. Hi, Bulba. Everybody is talking about this matchup. They've been talking about it all day. What did you say to your team, or what can you tell us about what you've said to your team to keep them focused and get their heads in the game? Well, uh, Artur, um, he might have ate too much for lunch, so I told him not to stink up the booth. You continue to be the most inspiring coach here at TI. That's what I do here? Thank you, Bulba. Yeah, no problem. Best of luck. There you have it. The secret to winning on the main stage. Don't stink up the booth. Well, as we go into game, we have none other than OD Pixel and Fogs to bring you the action. Thank you very much, Chobra. And yes, the series that I've personally been waiting for today, Evil Geniuses versus OG. What a way to sort of come to the end of this day. What a series that we're going to have between these two. So many storylines and the drafts. We couldn't have hoped for anything more. We've got Enigmas. We've got a Shakers. We've got, we've got some crucial key heroes. We've got some, some male TA coming out from Evil Genius. So much to watch out for. What are we reckoning, Fogged? How, how do you sort of feel that both teams are, are going to feel coming out of the back of these two drafts? All I know is I'm just extremely excited to watch heavy oh, team yes. fights coming out. We've got Crit on a signature Earth Spirit. We've got oh, Thompson yes. signature Invoker. Oh, yes. Well, let's go. Let's have a look indeed. The series. I'm looking forward to see what No-Tail can do on the support Nature's Prophet 2. They opened up with it and they went for Nature's Prophet plus Shaker as their two supports. We're going to see if, we're going to see if they're going to be able to match what a Vengeful Spirit and Earth Spirit can do. Talk to me about this. So the no-tail nature's profit. What can we expect to see from this? He's just going to try to secure lane, probably stay in top with the Drow Ranger as Earth Shaker plays around bottom in the mid lane to try to put pressure on. His job is really just make sure the Drow can get some fun. So already we see yes, more is position bottom, so that they don't want to have the PL versus the Enigma. CEG with this early smoke movement, aren't easy to make. Fly, crit. Why has it actually taken magic missile? And seeing Wave of Terror pretty much every time. They are He's ready really to hunting kill. for a kill. He is ready to kill, absolutely. We'll see if they find anything. Moment, Thompson already back on the middle lane, and up top you have Anna hiding right there in the tree line. So they seem to be sort of prepared for, for some sort of movement like this, and look to be unlikely. 
Uh, did they get caught out by Ichi's movement hit? I mean, Ochi's level 1 is extremely weak, right? I'm sure he goes for the cross wax spell because it's Topson, and that makes sure if you want to go for fights level 1 or better, but you've got an Enigma, you've got an Invoker on your team, you've got very little actual stuns and control in order to go for those catches or fights at level 1, just like the Shaker. You see the bottom bounty rune? Ignored. Oh! Start here. Oh yeah, we don't we don't see that one much. So we'll, we will expect the EG to pick that one up later, unless I mean we see the shaker sort of sort of roam over and catch winner. The fact that no one's taken. If Jarex is able to spot that one out, two bounty or two bounties go for each. Potentially get that third one. But they are going for that full pressure to try to slow down the drow. We'll see if No Tail can push them away. See how this mid lane goes. Samal versus Thompson. Thompson, oh, of course, he's going to have that aura and already. Really going at it between the two of them, trading hits. Really the, certainly the lane to watch us, as we'll also have to keep eyes. This, this bottom lane Seb, and there's Enigma backed up by Jarex's Shaker. You'd have to imagine S4 is going to play really defensively down bottom until he starts getting some support movement from his mates. Has to watch out for the Fissure blocks though, as bottom he does get blocked, and the Idol Lines actually trap him. Oh, he's in trouble here. Ah, uh, he's going to have Death Pots up in a second, but it's not soon enough. Oh, gee, setting up the first blood down there at the same time up top. No tail will fall. Uh, not quite quick enough for EG to get the first blood, as OG were just that little bit quicker. S4 really wanted to step up to try to contest these last hits, because Seb is just power denying the lane. You see five denies already on that Enigma. Jerex does get that punishment. So obviously this decision from uh, from EG to leave S4 on his own and, and run this aggressive trial lane top. Uh, at the are they likely to get kills off the back of these three? I mean, I say that they they're, they're getting straight in indeed again on top of No Tail. They will turn towards Fly. There's a lot of right click, of course, coming out with this Drower. Look at the body blocks as well, No Tail, with the Triance little set up for the kit. Nice micro there from No Tail, as to be expected. One of the micro legends as they find themselves a kill against this tri lane of yep. EG Top. Now it's without Jarex, really. Jarex is TP'd in. It's not like he actually did anything in there. As the career snipe comes out, oh. No Tail. Oh my goodness, No Tail already. Certainly showing us he's going to turn that sort of passion to, to beat EG here into these sort of brilliant plays in the first two minutes. That's how you can help your Invoker in that 1v1 matchup versus the TA. As the panel said, you know, you've got Drowar as the Invoker, but you're versus Templar Assassin, so you can't actually use that Drowar to your advantage. I will commit this to memory. And now that could be the bit. That could be the help right there. Very 12 4 for Sumail. Dominant TA. No tell has to be careful if he comes up, as you can see, crit in position to go on him as well as fly. No tell just keeping himself out of range of the magic missile. Flying crit won't go for the commitment on him and just sort of creating a nuisance, sort of drawing flying crit's attention away from that top lane. Is S4 going to see the bounty run as well? Oh, he does. Oh, he's going to Hey! Get it. Finally got it! Woo! Two minutes and 43 seconds in. He was priming it. He was just getting it better, you know? Letting it ferment. Top, we have to go. Straight in again, Crip with the roll, does find the portal smash onto three actually. Perfect angle there from Crip, but Artesian Fire blocked off by this, this Fisher from Jerax, and that's going to mean they can turn around OG and get the kill onto Crip. Beautiful. The Fisher from Jerax causing issues for EG's aggressive tri lane in terms of getting a kill. Oh, Topson, quick little heads up play there in the mid. He actually, Sumail was backed up trying to salve, and he brought, uh, stopped with the cold snap. And obviously, with that courier dead, still just for 30, se 30 seconds or so. Samel has to be careful. He's only got a fairy fire and a wraith band on him. So Topson has a, a very good stronghold yep. of that lane. And he needs He's it because Samel, as we can see, was leading the way in CS. 18 for 7 against the 12 for 3. He's Top calling lane. for his team to come bring his items. Never gone to RTZ. He's able to doppelganger across the Fisher. Topson played aggressive mid. He Samel. goes in onto Samel. Fairy fires pop. Topson, can he finish off the kill? He can't. Samel will just survive as Crit turns towards Topson and forces him. Away there as he slaps him with his stick. Samael's going to be able to salve up as well as I believe Crit did bring oh, that in for him. And oh, this holds up again. Thompson cancelling yet another salve in this mid lane. Thompson oh, for the side blades though. Samael outplays him. Gets him with the side blades. Jarex does go for the Fisher. He's looking to chase down Samael, but he has to back away with Crit still there, safeguarding Samael's TA. So already some fantastic sort of little interactions here between this 1v1 of Samael and Thompson here. Salve cancelled, but Samael takes the kill. Pretty cool, I think uh, one of those salve cancels that he got, actually got in the mid lane was because No Tail put that ward behind the tower when he sniped the courier. So those, these little, little things. Topson does die. From those. And that bottom lane as well, Seb, a lot of denies on this Enigma. That's 18 still for 18, but is level it, four? there's about, yeah, about a half a level in it at the moment between the two of them. Seb having that slight advantage, mid lane again, good side blade hits onto Topson, crit, rolls forward, but Topson, he's already got the, the QQ walk out of there. So you'll be fine, No Tail won't move forward with the TP in. 
some out. We'll go back to CS and of course keeping a very, very sizable advantage now against the Invoker. 24-11 on Samael's CS. Top lane, no tell. It's going to get on, but he turns with the Sprout. Anna with the Gust on to Tuba. Fly, crit, stand their ground, look towards the two of them. They'll magic missile up Anna, look for the two-man boulder smash. They find the angle, they do lose Fly, but Crit will be able to bring down no tail in return. Rolling forward, they're chasing down Anna. RTZ can't quite get to him though, as Anna's able to get his way through the trees and back under the cover of the tier one tower. Very smart to go for that, you know, bench stun onto the Drowly. You know, that's where the majority of the damage is coming in. Two man stun afterwards. Crit comes out and close early game. So he's again in this mid lane. Samael continuing to do some good work with the angles that he's finding with the side blades. He's level six now as well. They have to get a sentry ward for Thompson in case. Stop those pesky traps. You can even farm the traps because they give a decent amount of gold. As they emphasize another ward in the mid lane, so they're really prioritizing just making sure that Thompson has an okay time. He's getting oh, no, something, but he is, as I say, certainly struggling against Samael's TA. Oh, bottom lane, set. Leads in straight away with the black hole. Jarrett's can walk in. S4 does manage to get the ghost route and the heal off. No tail TP's in, looking to help finish off the kill. They'll sprout him up, and they will surround him and take him down. As they do manage to get S4 and continue to, to keep that bottom lane in favor of Seth. Top lane, EG look for the advantage to go in and collapse in onto Anna. Anna will Very survive nice, there. Gus. The Gus onto Fly, making sure that magic missile wasn't going to be there to cancel the TP. Played. And as this happens too, no tail with that TP bottom sets up for the kill, but they can also set up to pressure this tower. They even pop the draw aura Mid to lane. make sure. Thompson getting very low once again. This lane, I mean, the, the matchup, Samael is he's playing it perfectly. It's a matchup where you do expect the TA to have an edge, but Samael really is just shooting ahead of Topson's invoker. 34 for 17 against the 20 today. Top lane looking for Jerex. Jerex not going to be touched upon there by the roll forward from Crit. So should be able to walk it off. Just have to be careful how close he comes to flying RTZ. As he is sort of cornered in, Crit with eyes on him once again. Jerex with a quick enchant totem and a slap will be able to, to walk it off. Top lane, no tail, also being chased towards. Jerex is heading over to try and help. No tail, gets the teleport out before Fly can get in range for the magic missile. But EG themselves also able to start putting some pressure onto that top. Tier 1 tower, bottom lane again to Anna with this rotation, catching us for a little bit off guard. He does get the chance to go shroud and Death pulls himself back up to full health. And top lane, they see an advantage. EG close in onto No Tail. RTZ doppelgangers over the Fisher, finds No Tail, magic missile from Fly, straight out onto Jerex. RTZ keeps his distance to avoid the stun, goes straight back across towards the tower. They want to try and finish this tier 1 off. It's very low at the moment. As OG will pop the fortification, but they are unable to hold this tier 1 tower as EG will slowly but surely finish it off. RTZ should be able to get the last touch as well, that extra bit of bonus goal going the way of the Phantom Lancer. A very persistent commitment to keeping that tri-lane around the top side, but they've, been, they've done a great job on the side of EG of distributing their levels. You see RTZ's level 5, the two supports are also level 4, while Ana was getting slowed down so much that they had to actually push this draw ranger bottom to catch up. Almost level 5 at least though on Ana. But in a pretty, this is a pretty unsafe position for him to be. Pushing in very aggressively on this bottom lane. Any sort of TP or wraparound could cause the end of Anna's success down here as Crit S does come in. S4 is about to be level 6. He might want to be able to get that one before they go for this. Let's see how they the time way. it. One more creep. Crit just looking for the angle. He's pinging the creep There's too. the creep He's straight in. Yep. Crit's in. Shocked him back. But Anna with the gust. Oh! Is he out? He is! Anna! The and gust mid. reaction there. On point mid lane. Samel getting on upon. Has the mount. Topson and Big Daddy Notel now backing away as the TPs from EG come through Fly, finds the magic missile, onto the Nation's Prophet, the trap slows out as well, he tries to TP away, can he escape? He cannot! The damage is there from Samael, they get no tail. Woo! What an active early game we've got going, already. 5-5. Constant rotations on both, on all three lanes. Now Fly is going to take some of that mid lane. Those supports, going to get those level 6s at a decent time still. And it will be actually a mech on Seb on the Enigma. But going for that quick way to just group up and take those team fights. Like the panel mentioned, you look at OG's team fight, it's very scary. When they've got the Invoker, the Enigma, and the Earthshaker, very intimidating what they can provide. Here we go, they do go for this, but I, I think it may have been around that midboard. But they may be aware of this, because at the same time, Jerex and Seb are looking to wrap around. I think they saw, I think they know that sort of the, the movement there from EG leaving Samael. So they know that Samael's vulnerable and on his own. They do have the black hole if they can close in on top of Samael, but Jarex's smoke is going to get dispelled. Samael is aware of what's going on. 
We'll see if EG is successful with the movement on top. They do find Dana. Fly leads him with a magic missile roll. Four from Chris straight away with the control. Has the silence into the boulder smash. Punching him down, Anna with the gust. Trying to get away, but the final right click from Fly comes through. They get the kill. They may lose some of their lives in return, though. There's no tail. Arteezy He's surrounded. RTZ actually actually managed to move across from that top lane to help out. If they won't just get one, they'll get two. Both Anna and No Tail going down. It's mid lane Thompson. Able to get the EMP off. Stopping S4 and Samel chasing for more, but Crit, he's straight in underneath the tower. The boulder smash, stopping the Fisher from Jerex for now. He gets the silence as well, but it doesn't matter. The Malefish from Seb comes out, finishes him off. As Samel now being chased, Jerex throws out the Fisher, tops it up to the high ground, Samel's into the trees. Doesn't quite have Cold Snap up again. They actually went for a mid kill, it looks like, with the Black Hole, and I believe that S4 used the Reaper Scythe to cancel it. Situation. They do have burn charges on top, so he can look to get aggressive. For the setup, Cold Snap, EMP in the urn, as you say, the damage, the combo, perfectly done there by Thompson as he finishes off fly. And collects another urn charge, so now he's got two, so we can keep looking for those. But yeah, EMP is always one of those spells that is very devastating in this early game. Super good against the Necro boss. Yep. Makes s force job very hard as he comes to these fights, especially at the moment with just sort of the phase and the two nails. Doesn't have any sort of wand or any sort of burst the recharge. Kick back the tower. Indeed, kicks underneath the tower. Samel, can he find the connection? It doesn't matter. The damage from s force death pulse is enough, as again, crit. Certainly showing off so far on this Earth Spirit. He's been up and down, lane to lane. Three, two, and four, involved in seven of the eight kills of EG. Crit has done a fantastic job in making sure that this opening start has gone Pretty nicely for EG across the map. Critter Spirit, right? This is, this is what we've come to expect from this. Seb comes forward. Does take a magic missile to the face. TP from Jerex coming in. EG starts to back up. The Fisher onto two. Samel has the trap to slow down No Tail and Seb. Got the wave of tear back in as well as the smash. No Tail incredibly low. One right click will do it. And there it is. And they finish it off. Jerex goes in for the walk in Echo Slam. Fly's falling low, but the Death Boss heal is going to be coming over to him. So Fly, he's fine. They have managed to surround Samel, though. Samel gets left behind on the high ground. Samel gets taken down. Anna trying to chase down Fly as well. But Fly is pretty speedy. Thompson gets in range, though, for the Under Shadows. He's chasing it down here with the Ghost Walk. As Fly. Still trying to retrieve, but Thompson should be able to finish this one off. Another iron charge thrown out as Fly goes down. They want to play as fast as possible with this Drow Ranger. They're looking for this tower. Just want to get tower advantage. S4. S4. He stepped up. up yeah, as Thompson's there with the wraparound, the Gust into the right clicks. There's no chance for S4. Ooh. Between S4. the Gust as well as even if he does get the Ghost Shroud in those situations, Thompson's there to purge it off with the Tornado. 9 to 10, 12 minutes in. It's all kicking off between these two. Thompson. With a quick sort of setup on Sismail, doesn't want to go for anything more, is on his own at the moment. Those are painful though. You just eat a 400 mana burn. Starting to now go ahead. Got that one point in the egg sword. So can put us in some folk. The ice wall and the deafening blast, which can be very nice in this game too. Templar Assassin. Time to smoke once again here for Crit and Flight. As they look to rotate over into the jungle, they've got that ward down. They see Anna farming they, alone. They feel very strong. They've got level 6 on both their supports. No tail, still not quite level 6 on this Nature's Prophet. Scan comes out though and does catch EG as they're looking for the... And Anna's already moving away, getting himself away from this top half. Jarek's the one left behind, but he's into the trees, TP's out. And EG will find no kills off the back of those smokes. They can look to put some pressure onto that top tower. Arteezy's been getting a lot of space on this top lane, still sitting at the top net worth on his Phantom Lancer. It's going to be a quick defusal blade timing at this rate. Yeah, and it's very good hero, very, very good game for the PL versus this Drow Ranger. If he can close the gap over and over again, can make it very tough for Anna. Anna's also gone for uh, four points in Frost Arrows instead of maxing the Precision Ori, so he wants to be moving around. He's gonna get it gone on there, try to go with Fisher on Samael, does have the back of the Topson, tries to go for the combo, doesn't actually catch on to Samael or Fly, so they're fine. Crit's able to roll up to the high ground. Malefis was upon him, but Seb can't chase. Seb has to back off as EG starts to show the four of them in that middle lane. Arteezy's getting so much space out he of He really this. is. This top lane has been Arteezy's home ground and he's absolutely loving it. Almost taking that tier 2 tower as well on his own. OG really have just let him be on that top lane. They've done nothing to pressure him. This is a good timing for OG. Topson has the spirit vessel finished. As the panel mentioned, incredibly good versus the Necrophos, of course. Bottom. Tier 2. Topson wraps around. Uh, he is going to miss that tornado. Might not matter for the kill though. As crit surrounded, stuck in the sprout, does fall. As OG get that bottom tier two tower and the kill. But as we say, top lane, RTD pretty much got the tier two in return on his own. 
He's now looking towards Jarex. Jarex comes in, looking to clear the way, but there's Fly with the setup. Swap back into the magic missile. Jarex taken out for 45 seconds with the Reaper Scythe being slammed down upon him by S4. They're threatening high ground down here already with this Alacrity Drow. Flies back in, but he gets gusted silent straight away. The damage, the cold snap, the right clicks, he's gone. That's one member of EG gone for the defense. Artizi's going to TP in as well, though, to look to hold. Got like half damage on the tier 3 this early on. As soon as they force reactions, they do back up, though they don't want to take the risk of people porting behind them on that shrine. Got the Veil now finished on S4. As we've seen, though, these, these sort of plays coming out from tops and incredibly harmful heat. With that full spirit vessel, just so much damage yeah. from the combo, Topson. The moment, 10 to 12, as you say, 1k lead for OG. But it certainly feels very close, and one could sort of ask, would OG have intended to be further ahead when they run this sort of drow lineup? And as the EG, despite sort of the drow or that, that favoring for OG in the lanes, they've done very well in this first 15 minutes of, yeah. of gameplay. Yep, PL's gotten so much farming that yep. it was the TA matchup versus the Invoker. Sure, Topson is ahead because of all those rotations, but it just applies that pressure in the laning phase. As we did see Seb also change the build up. Originally had that mech queued up, and now we'll be just going for the pipe on top of Vitality Booster. Jarrett's Jarrett trying to pick up some farm. Does have Topson there, goes for the tornado onto two. EMP's down as well. Jarrett's trying to move into position to drop the combo. Gets get the Echo Slam! Does he get the fish drop? S4 still alive for now. He'll pop the Ghost Shroud, fly left behind. Seven Topson looking for S4. They find the vision for the cold snap. Spirit Vessel down onto S4 again as Topson grabs the double kill. But OG as well do lose two as Samael in the river did find no tail to the side of it. As Anna. Starting to play around with Roshan there. Don't know if they're going to quite be able to get away with that. Samael and Crit are still in position to, to contest this. They've got that trap down. They know they know exactly where OG is. OG's got the black hole available though, and they know that Crit actually committed the magnetize down bottom, which is their big team fight spell at this moment in time. They're actually going to look towards Samael in the mid lane. Fisher into the tornado. The silence does come out to stop sort of the rest of the combo from Thompson coming out straight away, but Samael's been sprouted. No tail. In with the TP, but Samael had the refraction, still able to get the blink out. Separates himself from the squad. Very nicely done there from Crit with that quick silence, making sure. So it was just the tornado coming out from Tops, and there yep. wasn't so that EMP follow-up that could have caused issues in terms of keeping those refraction charges up and allowing Samel to blink away. Crit's running out of stones because of how fast this game plays having to go down to one. A lot of occasions that I've seen here. The deep wards, as we saw earlier, were placed by OG, and they were able to get some kills out of that. And they're going to place some up toward the top side because now their fo main focus is going to start to be that Roshan. So having wards around that shrine area of EG most important. Artizi does have the fusal. Has queued up the manta, of course, afterwards. That standard build for the PL. Why? In the mid lane, maybe looking for a swap setup onto Jarax. Jarax from back away. Keeping himself in range of oh, fly swap. As it really just has been hard to easy. 1 0 3. Not been involved in too many of the fights, but certainly has, has sort of been favoring him in that sense. Lots of farm on this PL. EG's got vision of this. Considering going up. They got, they've got three stones now, Crit. He's committing forward. He's going straight forward. He finds the two of them. The sun is the sun. On to both of them. The magnetized down as well. As immediately they lose no tail. Arteezy there with the wraparound. Thompson turns. Looking for the tornado to hold them back. And with the ghost walk, Thompson will get out. So will Anna for now. Fly with the swap back onto Jarex S4. Moving into position. Doesn't have the Reaper Siphon. In fact, flies too deep. Thompson turns back in. Takes down the Venge. Six set up there by Crit. Just having vision up on that high ground. Gets the perfect combo. And I also believe the Enigma got the black hole. Like instantly cancelled, it looked like. Yeah. Except trying to get a position for it, but unable. He does claim a small. Very minimal. We're so close though in these first 18 minutes. Thompson more than halfway towards his Aghanim Scepter. A game where the fights have been as frequent as this one. That sort of strong Ags timing is going to make all the difference. In terms of just a ability to interrupt sort of the team fight that EG's been trying for. Just tops him once again on the hunt. Did go into the ghost walk underneath that that observer sentry combination. So EG will know about this. Arteezy, as you can see, already backing up from that top lane. Really want to play around this rush. It's so important for the OG lineup as well as the EG lineup. Tops is straight back towards the mid. Fly. It's been caught out by the sprout. It's fly. 
We're taken down. Thompson. They're gonna go straight the into the pit with that. Like these both these teams, one team has a draw ranger, the other team has a Templar Assassin. This is the area that is the most important in the game. Artis is gonna start to poke at them from the side with the spirit lance. Is OG still looking a bit a little hesitant on heading into that pit? They don't have their black hole available. Jerax is also very low on mana. Another magnetize is back up on Crip. He's got that team fight ability. Play it safe, Anna. Back to farming. Artis is going for the next item, Shadowblade. Has actually deviated from the Manta. Let's see if he changes it again, but I think he wants to be able to weave into the back lines of the fight to look for this Earthshaker and this Drow. So no their, their control is coming, it's Invoker, Enigma, and Earthshaker. It's a big control. And look for those other targets. They can't actually control this PL if the rest of his team is distracting. It's Thompson just 800 away from his axe. Invoker and still. Doing very well from the second highest in the net worth and ahead of Samael. Samael, of course, on that TA who was able to, to have that advantage in the mid lane matchup. But as we've seen from the fights, Thompson, as the Invoker, has just been able to offer that a little bit more. No Tails prepared to go for a dive already in the base here. Flight does go for the swap, getting Seb up onto the high grab of Flight. He's actually just going to get right clicked down here by the Eidolon army. As Seb claims the kill, Anna looks for the Gust on to crit, but crit did get the roll off. He didn't manage to put the stone down though because of the silence, goes for the kickback. Anna with the double damage wants to fight. Echo. In with the Echo, has the control. On to Arteezy as Arteezy gets taken out of that fight as soon as he turned up. He just got the blink dagger as well. So it was completely unexpected. And she had no idea that was coming. And now they're pushing up to the high ground. OG 21 minutes in, taking the tier 3 tower. Only two alive at the moment. On EG S4, silence. They're moving. Jarex jumps forward, has the control. S4's gone. Dead for 40 seconds. OG threatening the melee racks here on this bottom lane. And EG, they're not going to be able to do anything about this here. 21 minutes in. OG taking the full, pretty much, set of racks down bottom. We'll see if these Eidolons can finish up the range racks. And they certainly can. OG getting away with the speed and pressure that they need to with this Drow Ranger strap. And how they prioritize setting up to. No Till was in the base for a good 30 seconds preparing for them to look for something like that as he goes for it, does. Fine. Oh. No Till, crit. Yeah, crit. Through the trees, able to find him and no Till. We'll try once more for the TP, but the damage from the Magnetize too much. Crit. Get some sound for charge on that Spirit Vessel. It's Jarex. It's looking to come in with the backup, Thompson and Anna. Also on the hunt. Oops. Out they go, Thompson with the setup through the trees, throws out the tornado as they'll get the trade. They'll take crit down. Arteezy continuing to just try and make the most of any sort of space he sees on the map. Straight down mid, gets a tier one tower. Pretty much has the money for that Shadow Blade. On top of his diffuser, but we are really still yet to see Arteezy turn up to a fight and offer something. As that last time down bottom, as we mentioned, caught off guard by Jarex's blink dagger timing on the Earthshaker. It's just very tough for them to take any heads, up, heads on fights versus OG just Look at this how again. strong they are. And it's just a numbers advantage instantly. That Five wall wants to, but yeah, Noto was already prepared. They knew everything that was kind of coming for them. And they're already on their way over. We uh -huh. see Jarex had just picked up the blink dagger on the right on the, on the side shop and yeah. Look at this on the side of the top, Arteezy turns up, he's like, what's up boys, and then BAM! Jerex is in, Echo Slam, and he's out of it. He's got to sit the sidelines for 48 seconds. Was not prepared for that blink dagger on Jerex at all. Courier snipe, no tell wants it, but he... Flip comes out, he actually started oh. attacking the tower, but... Oh, mid lane, Samael! On top of Anna, Anna turns again, the Gust TP is going to work out once again, it's not this time, Arteezy's in with the damage. These Gust plays though from Anna, just a split second, even... The quick ones that have happened has saved his life on multiple occasions. I think Look three or four though. times. 40 seconds, no drought. EG, they see the chance. They're into the Roche pit. They can do it pretty fast themselves, as you said, with some mail. The TA, they've got the bench. Can he look for the big plays here? He smoked up. Oh, he is, and he's got the slam available. He's got his eyes on the pit. Can he uh -oh. time it perfectly? The tornado coming in for the side. Just managed That's to catch two. him. He's pretty low. They're moving into the pit. There's the black hole coming out over the two of them. They've lost the bench. The Roshan still being focused by Arteezy. Jarex Arteezy still alive with the Shadow Blade. Seb finally gets taken out by Samel. But Samel's held in place by the Ice Wall. Jarex into the pit. There'll be the buyback from Fly. Samel goes down. Thompson able to fight it with a cold snap. Jarex will tick down to the back to touch. Roshan still alive for now. The silence from Crit out onto Thompson. Arteezy double ganger still, still alive. alive. Gets on top of the Evoker. Thompson falls back towards the oh pit. No Tails trying to find it, but the slam goes out for Roshan. They get, get the get kill, it. but Crit gets the Aegis triple kill for Crit. And he's not done yet. Rolls forward, looks for Jarex. Jarex taken out as well. And OG, they're still fighting back. 
He'll find crit. Spirit Vessel cold snap. He's down once. He'll look to set it for a second time. The ice wall's down and he gets the quick gust. Thompson goes back in and once again cold snaps out. He can't roll himself away. Crit will fall. As the buybacks from OG there enable them to sort of sort of settle the, the deal after the Roshan gets taken down. They did get the kill on Roche, but as we saw, Crit was able to get the Aegis, does lose it straight away. Overall, because of the buyback expenditure, was favoring EG in terms of net worth change. But still, not necessarily what EG hoped for there. They nearly got everything. They were nearly able to sort of take it back, but the cleanup of the Crit's emoji. Look at Crit's positioning in this fight. He was hiding in the tree, waiting for them to go for it. Instantly stops that black hole. Arteezy also, with the Shadow Blade pickup, we see him just kind of playing around inside the pit. He survived for so long as this Phantom Lance. Oh, he's straight back in. Fights no turn. Arteezy's on top of him. Ah, that was... that was insane. Thompson. The wraparound on S4 again. Ghost Shroud is there. Thompson quick with the Tornado. EMP combo. Someone needs to come across and help S4. As S4 just getting solo killed here by Thompson. Styling on him here with the Invoker plays. As now, look at to Fly. Fly just have the back up a crit. So Thompson goes for for now. Jerax jumps forward. The fish head, the cold snap, the spirit vessel. He just does so much. Thompson finds the double kill. 11 3 and 9 on his invoker. Always has that cold snap available. That talent. Such good combo with that spirit vessel, in particular, like we said, in the beginning, versus that Necrophos. S4 just doesn't have the itemization to remove it. Doesn't go, didn't go for Lotus Orb, didn't but go for Lotus Look at this top, straight in. They've got the slow, they've got the stun straight up on top of Anna. He's gonna get forced to the sidestep. Can he keep this man alive, though? He doesn't have the black hole back up. You have an Anna with a big gun setting him back. Tornado! Thompson! He's in with the back of the Meteor! Oh. Deadly Blast coming down! Thompson with the saves! Gets both of them! Oh. Thompson Invoker doing it big time on the main stage! As the Fisher for Jarex, it sets up for another. The cold snap, Spirit Vessel, no tell. He comes in to join the party. This man on his invoker, in every situation, finding these clutch plays. Anna also with the talent, going for that 550 gust knockback. It pushed him so far away. Jarex, he's just straight in again. There's the combo, Spirit Vessel, cold snap. Crit just getting ticked down. Says for we'll start to try and heal him up with the death pulse. Says the buybacks from Arteezy and Samel. Do push OG away, but OG now getting a sizable advantage here in game one against EG. 9k advantage. A set of racks up as well. All three cores ahead of that of Evil Geniuses. The mobility that's coming out and the preparation it seems from OG as well. As we saw, no tone in some of these situations, teleporting before the fights even start, just to set up for his team, and then Thompson always being there. Look at these squads, he's so fast. Samel's so got to be careful. He's heading out the top, then we'll see down bottom. Out easy, finds no tell. Sumail desperately needs this BKB. He comes out too far. Thompson or Jarex will be there with the setup on that top lane. 21 in vogue. 16 Templar Assassin. Sumail cannot move from this spot. Just come down. So it could be fine for now. Thompson and Jarex, they're still waiting for him to sort of cross that line. It looks like Samael knows. Oh, nope. play cool. They know. They, they just saw the courier fly over and just stop. Yeah. So they're aware that something's going on. GG. Sure. Starting really to have their backs against the wall. Each of these fights, they have to get on top of Thompson. Can't let him get away with, you say, these sort of constant cold snaps to Samael. They'll be coming out a little too far now, Jarex. There we have it. Finds the fish of the gust into the combo. There's the slam oh. to hold him down. 60 seconds. The patience from Samael, not quite patient enough as he comes out alone. They were ready and waiting, OG, to make that play. And they get away with it. No buyback on Samael. How can EG slow this down? They don't have heroes with any deep push versus this lineup. It's a second set of racks. Tier 3 is being a threat now. What can Arteezy do? As he turns up to this fight, it's been a hard each and every time they get the swap back onto Anna this side. Bam! Anna's gone for AC. Perfect way to start the fight, but there's the black hole. The sun strike as well. Flight gets taken down. Jarek's jumping in with the control onto S4. As the boulder smash for crit comes out, magnetized as well. Causing issues for No Tail. No Tail's taken out. The buyback straight away on S4's crit. Looking to chase for more. Gets on top on top of Seb. Seb goes with the TP out. The fish from Jarek's will allow Seb the space to escape. Cut. 
caught crit with that stun. So crit wasn't able to get that boulder smash. That, that's a very heads up play though by EG getting that swap into Reaper Scythe instantly before Ana gets the BKB off. And There's no hesitation. It puts an end to the push. They do lose that tier 3 tower, but they keep that top set of racks alive. Does cost them the S4 buyback, so still EG not yet to find that play to really switch around the momentum of this game. As OG are still in the driver's seat, we'll see it once again here. Crit was prepared. Instant Stone. play. Yeah, instant. But uh, Seb gets a nice follow-up here with the Fissure. Gets the two-man black hole. But as soon as S4 does die, goes for that buyback, and you see OG does retreat. They don't want to overextend too much when they have this advantage right now. It still feels like such a tall mountain for EG to climb when they've got a Templar Assassin, and this is the pre-30 minutes, and this TA doesn't have a BKB. We're hitting that 30-minute mark, and Sumail doesn't still quite have it. He really needs it in order to be able to do anything versus Volker and the Sersha. It's a full AC yeah. on Thompson. Ready to, to really assist this sort of end game push that they're looking for. Yeah, this this they're looking at it for sure yeah. here with this item buy. They know that they've got a very sizable lead with their lineup. One more team fight that goes wrong for EG could certainly cost them the game, especially with some of these buybacks unavailable at the moment. EG having to be careful. They've got to somehow enable Artsy in these fights. Just so hard, the amount of control that they actually do have on OG, so much team fight. I mean, is, is it not sort of the point where you feel like RTZ may even have to go for a BKB, or do you feel heart is still the right way to go? I think if he goes BKB, that's it's, it's just, he needs to have a heart. He needs yeah. to just be able to play around in the fights. If he just has to play around a 10 second BKB, then they're going to be in so much trouble. It's, TA needs one. RTZ, I don't think he can afford to go for that item. Just starting to take full sort of war control of the map. Full Greaves complete on Seb. No Tower's got a gem out. The full group up build around the Enigma. The Guardian Greaves, the Crimson Guard, the Pipe. They're getting a lot of EG's damage. Just so much for these pushes. Yeah. Now, 30 minutes in, they're really at this sweet point. OG where, where the lineup sort of hit, hits, a, hits a bit of a peak. They, they, and they know they're already ready to amp up the pressure once again as they hover around the mid lane. EG cannot afford to go one by one outside of the base. Yep, they see the top lane. Yeah, Samael, he's gonna even get jumped in this position straight away. Jax with the combo, Samael's gone without buyback. No toe goes for the Sprout, crit with the, quick with the pull to allow a flight to get out of the Sprout. OG, piping and crimsoning up. S4 looking towards no tail. Jax priming himself on the side, ready to blink back in. In fact, they just got the damage onto S4. S4 gets swapped back. Jax jumps in, looks for the Fisher, gets silent. Oh, he for the black oh. hole! Except the, the, the Reaper side cancels the black hole, but the combo from Toxus straight on top of RTZ takes him out. RTZ's dead for 80 seconds. S4, Crit and Fly getting pushed back to the base. And OG, they're gonna go for another set of racks. Both cores down, no buyback on Samael, no buyback on RTZ. You can see how confident they are. They know they can clean this out. This is the last fight for EG. They jerk forward. Rolls in, but immediately the Gus Jarek's in again with the control. The Fisher out between the two of them. They find the uh, uh, Spirit. They're going to find S4. They're going to find Fly as well. GG is called. And Damn. game one in a series where I think a lot of people would have expected to see something quite fantastic from EG. OG. They absolutely crushed it. 32 minutes in, 18k a net worth. The Drow lineup, the Drow draft worked perfectly. The pressure, the speed that they could play at, it just never got to a point where Samael or, or Artizi could really offer much in the fight.